I've upgraded my green screen setup. Yes, we can now see my feetsies because people kept asking me why they were cut off because my green screen didn't cover them, but now it does. And I've also gotten rid of my torso. I've decided it is unnecessary to have a body to talk about fantasy, or at least this, this part of it. This doesn't need to be here. I don't know, I just, just wanted to be weird, so we're being weird now. Let's go ahead and jump into the topic of the video, shall we? In this video, we are gonna be covering classic versus modern fantasy. And I'm sorry to disappoint the people who are thinking this is gonna be some kind of like, duking it out, oh, which is better video, because that's not what I'm going for at all. Another video for another day. But what this video is actually about is how the term classic fantasy is used in comparison to modern fantasy and how wibbly wobbly, mashy washy, confusing and, and just downright overgeneralized that can be at times. So first of all, let's figure out the context in which people use the term classic classic fantasy and which of those three definitions I will be directly addressing here in this video. First, there's the one I'm going to talk about the least and I find to be the most just straightforward. Like there doesn't need to be much clarification here. And that is that it's classic in the sense that it was very important for the genre. These are your obvious examples. Well, one, if we're looking for the modern times, A Song of Ice and Fire will be massively influential as the decades go on. I don't think that'll be a controversial opinion. And it is going to be an icon of the fantasy genre. Whether people are embracing it or trying to steer away from it, has yet to be seen, but A Song of Ice and Fire, even if it's just in the conversation of adapting fantasy, is going to be considered a classic. We go further back, and then you have things like His Dark Materials, Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Narnia. They're classics in the sense that they are icons of what the genre can bring to the table. That's not what this is focusing on either. Then there's the second definition, which we'll touch on a little bit, and that is the relevance of the story. Is it modern in the sense that it's here and it's something we're all still discussing, or is it mm, classic more in the it's in the days of past, it maybe had its influence, but we're not talking about it with what's going on right now. We're going to touch on that a bit because I find that to be the most connected to the third definition and the one we're going to discuss most closely. And that is the classic style of fantasy versus the modern style of fantasy, which is the biggest gray, wibbly wobbly, mashy washy thing on the planet, in my opinion. There are a lot of comments like these ones on my channel, which are saying, oh yeah, there are elements of this guy's story that feel classic to me. And that's a very clear reference to a style of writing. So let's go ahead and talk about the current differences between the modern style of fantasy and the quote unquote classic. Notice I said current difference because the first point I really want to drive home here is that this is something that is constantly evolving and changing. If you and I were to jump in a time machine and hop back to 1970 and find one of our fellow fantasy nerds, pin him down, shake him real close and say, what's modern fantasy versus classic? He would urinate probably and then tell us some of the differences between the fantasy being written in 1970 and that which is written in like the 1940s and 30s. But if we come back to modern times and look at fantasy in the 1970s, we largely just lump that in stylistically with the fantasy being written in the 30s, 20s, 10s, 1890. Can we, can we go back that far? I mean, there, there's fantasy written all over the place. And here's where I would like to bring in my Twitter poll I recently put out. Yes, I manipulated you and lied into giving me data for a video. <laughs> I'm an evil man and you shouldn't trust me. But if you see here, I asked, where do you find the line between classic and modern? And what we have is uh, eh, a bell curve. And I guess this is the time to bring up that yes, there is a fourth definition of classic fantasy where there's some definitive year or time where the classic ends and then the next one begins. And that's the worst definition of fantasy to me, because as you can see here, it's something that evolves and slowly changes. There's gonna be people who make the case that all the way back in the 70s or 80s, we started seeing the seedlings of what became popular in the modern genre of now. So maybe that's where we should say the definitive line is. Or no, it didn't fully reach its final form until 2010. I'm sure if Twitter let me put 2020 on this poll, please give me more than four options. It's ridiculous that you limit me to that. But anyway, if I was able to put 2010 on there, we would see this bell curve complete and people would say, no, it started right now, the brand new. And I think that all of you have a point and are 
kind of right or wrong. So let's just agree that this is something that'll constantly be moving forward as time does, and there's no definitive hard date for classic and modern. And let's go back to talking about the stylistic evolution, which is what this video is going to be focusing on. But don't you worry, my fans of bell curves. We're gonna be talking about bell curves within bell curves soon, so just, just buckle down. So when the conversation of the style of classic fantasy shows up, inevitably, hopefully, I love these people, the hardcore fantasy nerds show up, and we'll bring up all kinds of authors who were well ahead of their time, and maybe their style, even though they were writing in an era which is pretty definitively talked about as classic fantasy, will hold up to modern trends. Now, not universally, almost no one, in fact, I would say there is no fantasy author who was writing in the 80s, is going to read exactly like someone being written now. There's just too much change, but certain elements of their writing damn well can. I've recently started reading Guy Gavril Kay, and I find his writing to, yes, be in the style of what I would say is classic fantasy largely, but he was vastly ahead of his time, as it's become abundantly clear even one book in, for what was standard in terms of character work and theming of his stories. Robert Jordan is another author who, yes, I'm very, very well versed in, and I can say that his character work was decades ahead of his time when he first started publishing The Wheel of Time in the 1990s. It's still up to par with what's being written now with his care to tackle things like mental illness, the stresses, and the mental breakage someone could go through with the journey the characters are on. But to contradict that, I find the beats of his story, especially early on in The Wheel of Time, to harken back much more similarly to the classic fashion of fantasy story beats. I think that's somewhat related to his original ambition, which was to write The Lord of the Rings in a more modern context, so inevitably his story elements were glued to that formula at first, and then as the styles changed and the 90s transitioned into the 2000s, he broke away from that further and further. And then we get this great little experiment where you have a definite modern fantasy author, Brandon Sanderson, coming in and finishing off the series. And that gives us a very clear example of how it did just kind of naturally bleed into the modern genre. I think that's why so many people refer to The Wheel of Time, even outside of the hardcore fan base, as a wonderful bridge between classic and modern fantasy. There are, of course, authors who are the opposite of this, who upon releasing a fantasy book, it's already dated. Nothing in their writing really pushes the bar. Maybe it even just feels like it's all in an older style, but do not discount these people. Just because something's not at the cutting edge of the trends doesn't mean it's not worth your time or a valid, neat, worth discussion fantasy story. And I just wanna take a moment to hit that note here in this video, because I feel like it can come off like I'm saying, you have to stay on the cutting edge at all times. That's what's so important. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just trying to clinically examine how these things push forward and how we should talk about them when referring to classic as a style. So this question just became even harder to answer because we don't just have the bell curve of the style of modern fantasies rise and classics kind of eventual downfall, which again, I mean, we still have people writing in a classic fashion and we have people back in the day who are writing in a more modern, but we have bell curves within bell curves once you break down authors. One element of their writing can fall back here and another over here. And once we measure it all, we're just, oh my God, things are so confusing. I mean, every author, once you break them down like this, is gonna be a bit scattered. No one's writing just uniformly falls into one specific era of this is the way fantasy is written and we stringently follow it. It's just not how human beings work. Our influences evolve and grow and come from different eras. We're not just all die hard looking at Tolkien going, I'm gonna follow you, man. So when answering this question of what is the classic fantasy style of writing, you more or less need to look to the doctor who put it best. More like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. Yeah, it's all wibbly wobbly, timey wimey, mushy gray, because there's no hard lines of this is how a character was written in 1955, because not every author in 1955 was writing characters the same way. And you can't even expand that generally and say there's like five to 10 year chunks of how characters were written, because there can just be a five year period where everything is propelled forward stylistically within the genre way more aggressively than it was for the past 50. I would say we're in 
one of those times right now where suddenly the self-publishing boom has drastically change the landscape of fantasy in a more aggressive way than we have seen in decades. So Daniel, damn it, tell me the solution here. If you're saying that we can't just say something's in the classic style because there's no definitive hard lines, then how can I say something is reading like it was written in decades past? Well, you can. I'm not saying you can't. I'm never here I'm trying to say you can never say, oh, this reads classically to me. But try to have a slightly more nuanced approach would be the best case, in my opinion at least. Try to say specifically what is reading to you more like it was written back in that older style with the flowery prose and the less focus on flawed protagonists at the front and center, which is what we're seeing now. Yeah, I will go ahead and make the statement that prose aren't what they used to be consistently. We still have authors writing with prose that are just... I would say By Gabriel K. Neil Gaiman and Rothfuss are all modern in the terms of they're still putting out content fantasy writers whose prose are as flowery and luscious and poetic as ever. So again, proving that this is all... It's all a cloud, man. So I guess my final answer to the question of what is classic versus modern fantasy comes down to nuance. Try to be as specific as possible, and if there's something that does seem to be ahead of its time, even if it's just written in the 40s and reads like it's in the 70s, maybe point it out. Because I'm seeing more and more people say it's in the classic fashion, and what they mean is it reads like something before 1980, but there's no real tact there. There's a lot of difference between something that was written in the 70s and something that was written in the 30s. That's a huge gap of time where fantasy did change quite a bit. Acknowledge the ever-shifting bell curve, and note that people from different eras would consider what they were reading at the time the golden modern standard, highly evolved. Every generation of fantasy authors stands on the shoulders of the last to propel what we're reading further and further. If YouTube allowed me more characters in titling this video, it wouldn't be classic versus modern fantasy. It would be the breakdown of how classic fantasy is too blanket of a term, and instead we need to acknowledge the fact this genre it deserves the academic approach of looking at each decade individually and seeing how they slowly bled into the next leading up to what is the current state of quote unquote modern. Trends rise and fall, and they can even rise again. I think maybe in the next decade or so we might see prose become super important to what is considered good fantasy once again. It's just a suspicion, but I'm leaning towards that again becoming something that's really important to be considered a good fantasy writer. And if that's the case, these people who are just saying blanketly this reads like classic fantasy will suddenly be wrong, because modern fantasy will once again have these flowery longer descriptions, and if that's the case, what was classic is now modern. Now, as always, I'm very interested in keeping this discussion going. It's difficult for me to do that because YouTube is limited in how much I can respond to you. There's a hundred people making 50 different points and I can't go through and leave the paragraphs for each I would need. But let me know where you think I got this wrong and right in the comments down below. Do you prefer it just being a blanket term of, yeah, it just reads like it's older and there's no real nuance between what's older and something that's much older? Or no, you appreciate the idea that there are trends that rise and fall certain authors authors can't be just pinned down as this is a classic fantasy author, and we need to take the approach of, well, this guy had his world building on a scale that feels Tolkien-esque, but the way his characters evolved was definitely more similar to the modern trend of having these flawed people with mental issues, and they're not just morally in the right, they're more gray necessarily, because that's the conversation I much rather have, because I'm a big old lame nerd who spends way too much time thinking about these things. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. I mean, I think I earned a like because I showed you my full feet, they're not cut off anymore. And that, that took a little bit of effort, so... Like button, or is it on that side? I don't know. Anyway, have a good one, y'all. Peace. <laughs>